Hi, this is Russ with DevotedGolfer.tv. This is Alex D. And Alex and I had a great time talking about the Enzo system last year. We did. And about Chef Droop. And Droop Kick, I think, was the term we kind of invented. At That's that right. Point. I, yeah. I, I don't call it Droop Kick. I think the, the, the word I use is uh, um, Bounce Kick. Bounce Kick. Bounce Kick. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And so my recollection is that Bounce Kick is maybe a factor of five, and Chef Kick. In the, in the target direction is maybe a factor of two, so you might actually be getting more bounce kick than you're getting target Typically kick. we see that, but you know, it'll depend on the swing type, yeah, right? And yeah. it's in the type of head and the type of shaft. Those yeah. will all contribute into what kind of bounce kick you'll have. Yeah, and we had an earlier conversation here about fitting and, and with Kim Bradley, who you saw as you were walking in, and, and the conversation mm -hmm. went that somewhere in the neighborhood of 20% or more of the people that you fit will fit contrary to whatever rule you thought worked. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you find that every time you think, oh yeah, I can do this with a formula, bam, along comes that guy. Well, fitting is extremely complicated. And yeah. there's a, I, I really admire the people who do, in the fitting space because they're doing something that honestly is, needs a computer to juggle all the different things going on. And um, we look at fitting, uh, from a simplistic point of view, you could, you know, people talk about affecting loft and saying, you know, there's a certain profile and you could really uh, change the launch conditions from that. But there's so many different swing types, different shaft profiles, whether it's mm -hmm. the stiffness in bending or twist, weighting characteristics, types of head, where you're going to hit it on the head. Mm -hmm. uh, all these things can change, uh, for example, loft in several ways. And uh, to juggle all these variables in your head, it's extremely challenging, you know. So you, don't, so you don't think we've looked at enough data yet to actually solve the problem? If we look at enough data, will, can we solve the problem? Well, this is what I want to start off by mentioning is uh, I have every respect for, for fitters and what they do today. And I have a lot of respect also for uh, the, the biomechanic field, uh, biomechanists that study this. And I'm not in that field. I really want to make sure I state that because I may say things that I think a lot of people in that field would say that's trivial, like we've been talking about that forever, and I'm really not aware of that. But what I would say is that uh, with ENSO and some of the things that we're doing, we're, we're seeing that there's a lot of uh, uh, characteristics in a, in, a, in, a, in a swing or in a shaft mm -hmm. or the head uh, that are going to, that have a tendency to either um, superimpose an effect or mm -hmm. cancel an effect. So sometimes, you know, it's not so trivial as saying, you know, we've got a softer tip and lofting higher is just a softer uh, tip section. Mm -hmm. It's not so cut and dry. And you'll find some players um, where you try that, um, it doesn't work the way you expect, yeah. okay? And so that's, that's um, where the fitting becomes a little bit of a trial and error process. Mm -hmm. And anything I can do to kind of eliminate that trial and error process is really what I'm after. I wanna make it a little more efficient. Uh, I think fitters today will tell you that they don't have a lot of time to work with a player and let them go through several iterations of shafts and they, they hang their head well, on being able to... Well, you're limited basically in how many balls that client can hit that day. Uh, I mean, exactly. They're, you've they're, got, you know... They're going to fatigue. Um, you're not going to find too many kids out there. You're not going to find too many people other than kids that's out right. there that can hit the big bucket. That's right. You know? you're, so you're going to hit the medium bucket, but a lot of people you lose on the small bucket. Yeah. So if we can get there uh, quicker, right, and yeah. uh, more precisely and more scientifically, yeah. I think that's, that's really like a, a golden age of fitting, mm -hmm. right? And we're trying to move it more toward uh, science and letting computers do a lot of that work um, and taking away the, uh, some so, of the... So we talked a little bit about this, that, that you're going to work in this direction. I am going to work in this direction. It's actually a big push, you know, ENSO for us um, has taken off a, from people who are really curious about exactly what the body might be doing or what the club is doing, and they've come to us and asked, you know, whether we can verify or uh, dispel some some theories they've had. And it's great working with that field, and and we've used it primarily as a means of research, kind of wondering what is the shaft doing, and um, is it are certain things that we do um, as we expected. Mm -hmm. And if we make new products, you know, are we able to achieve uh, what we're trying to do? And it's been kind of in that research uh, phase where it's a little bit, um, the, the, the view of it, the scope is somewhat limited to saying, well, just 
measure something. What are you seeing? And, and mm -hmm. there's so much data, and just getting over that hurdle was is, is, was a kind of a bear. But um, the the obviously the the simpler question is, how do you use this information to fit? You must have piles of data by now. Uh, we do, and, but we want to continue to grow that data, mm -hmm. right? And make it smart, and then use this use the data to uh, with advanced analytics to be to to guide the fitting process. Right? Did you get a chance to watch a TED talk I sent you? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. But I know yeah. what you're talking about: machine yeah. learning, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's. It, I think there's a lot in parallel with what we're trying to do, where the fitting continues to evolve as we collect more data. And you just let the machine, you give the machine some direction Correct. and let it analyze the data and and zero in on the yeah. solutions that you wouldn't, it's, it's pattern recognition. You wouldn't have seen the patterns. Correct. And you know, and it's, the, the, these things aren't big enough. That's right. right. And, yeah. and you bring up a good point. It, 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 the, today, well, there's a difference in one, trying to solve something through physics and um, through some kind of computer modeling. Right. And from an engineering point of view, I think sometimes you see a problem like this, you go, let's attack it that way. Yeah. Um, and as you see to what's going on today with, with data capture, mm -hmm. and, and not just in the real world out there. We're mm -hmm. talking about you know, people wearing fitness devices, we're talking about uh, a lot of devices at home that can take information, the, the, the internet and all the things that we enter in there, and mm -hmm. you know, how Netflix might you know, recommend a movie to you, or Amazon oh, yeah, might right. know what to yeah. ship to you. Yeah. All this is based on data. And, or or um, what, kind of, what kind of ad to present to me next time I'm on Facebook. That's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. And, you know, I read some articles about how uh, data is being used to predict influenza spreads, you know, yeah. and the yeah. effect in certain countries. So they, ahead of, you know, the next years. And, mm -hmm. and they're doing it very accurately through past data. Um, we're using data. I think in a very clever way um, with advanced analytics to be able to determine very complicated things that are occurring in the shafts, mm -hmm. right? So if we were able to say, well, um, we've got a variety of swings, we've got a, can, we, uh, can we segment those swings into certain buckets, right? And I think with ENSO, we really have an ability to look very deep into different types of swings. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of that would be, I think, Currently, fitting might be toward, let's say, uh, like a speed of the head, club head speed. Right. Or you're a 100 mile per hour club head speed. Maybe you're a 90, or, you know, an 80. Mm -hmm. And they look at that number, they want to fit off of this number, right? What we see with Enzo, and again, to the biomechanic guys who seem to already know this, I'm not going to um, overstep and say, like, I'm, I'm discovering something special. But right. um, what we see, honestly, is that there's different ways of getting 100 miles an hour. There's different ways of getting 80. There's mm -hmm. different swing types of, of getting that. One of them that I focus on is uh, hand speed mm -hmm. and angular velocity of your release, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's terms for this in, the, in, the, in that field that I maybe don't express. But, uh, yeah. you know, there's a release velocity in your wrist. and uh, and hand speed, and we see them vary quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, those have a, uh, a way for us to characterize the swing, for example, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Plus we have the entire swing beyond just that impact. Right. And when we segment all this information out with the data we've got, with how the shaft's behaving, we could actually start doing some analytics to say, well, what, what's going to be the effect of shaft weight? What's the effect of uh, the twisting stiffness, or the EI distribution, mm -hmm. um, or the length of the shaft, or what is the effect maybe of a CG location for that swing, mm -hmm. for anything we're looking at, whether it's loft, or kick speed, or orientation of the club head, right? So as a fitter, it'll really come down to someone taking a swing and looking at what they want to achieve uh, in this fit, whether it's changing launch, whether it's changing direction, mm -hmm. whether it's getting more kick, mm -hmm. uh, we could optimize the algorithm to find the right shaft very quickly by scouring tons of data right. and looking at things that, that might superimpose, looking at things that may cancel out, right. things yeah. that are very difficult, I think, for the human brain yeah. to process. We can't see that large of a scope of variables to find a pattern. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. that's why I really respect what they do because they have a lot of uh, ability to Every fitter I've known has an ability to improve someone's um, performance. Mm -hmm. um, but it's experiential based. I mean, you just kind of, which, which, which to me means don't change your shaft designs too often. 
Because it might take me a whole year to figure one out. That's right. And, that, and, and because it's experiential based, I, I've got to work with the chef for a while before I know that's true. when and where to use it. That's right. And I think when the fitters are comfortable with a the product, it's when they're more likely to recommend that product. And about Absolutely. the time I get comfortable with it, it goes obsolete on me. So don't change them too often. We, we try not to, you know. Yeah. Um, so speaking about evolution, so that's my piece. Just, okay. Okay. We'll just leave that one right there. So speaking about evolution, we've got a speeder evolution. This yeah. is, you know, I go back to this number, 757, and I, I may have said this before, this was my first custom shaft. This was, this was my yeah. introduction. Yeah to custom fitting. Yeah, no, that's, you know, over 10 years ago, the 757 was a product that, uh, that kind of created the segment of a premium shaft and had a lot of success in the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Fujikura, it's, it's a brand that's iconic mm -hmm. and uh, resonates with a lot of golfers. Mm -hmm. And um, we released a 757, uh, kind of like the a relaunch of it last year. Right. And yeah. um, it's had a lot of success. Um, mm -hmm. The line continues through the the six five one and the um, uh, the five six nine and four mm -hmm. seven four mm -hmm. and uh, just just like you had in the past, there were just there were a whole we, bunch yeah, of speeds. Yeah, we brought back you, you know yeah. some of the the ones that uh, that had a lot of um, success in, on yeah. tour and and with with fitters. Mm -hmm. And so, speeder evolution. What what's what's new? How is how has the speeder of last year evolved this year? Yeah, you know it's it. Within a year, there was a lot of advancements in materials, and they, we really wanted to apply those in this shaft, mm -hmm. and it made a big difference. Um, in terms of the, uh, the playability, they're identical, but in terms of the feel uh, and some of the performance attributes, you'll see some improvements to the ev evolution. Mm -hmm. And it's achieved through having a new Tory type fiber, mm -hmm. the T1100, mm -hmm. and this is like a, an intermediate type fiber that's, that's got a lot of extra strength, so the way we apply that can add some performance behavior benefit mm -hmm. but uh, there's also a, we have the, something we call a tracks core mm -hmm. and the tracks is something that the speeders goes back to that's right it's speeder 101 yeah. it's speeder 101 and yeah. you know when this material was was sourced uh it from for fujikura it, it's it was a uh, used in aerospace it was used in satellite structures mm -hmm. and it's a unique woven material that's uh, in three directions and mm -hmm. so something like that's a uh, very challenging to make Mm -hmm. and very costly, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a, 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 a proprietary use on that for mm -hmm. golf shafts, and mm -hmm. um, it's been really successful in, in, in the feel and the performance attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, in this shaft, it's, it's what we call a 50-ton fiber, mm -hmm. um, which is a very high modulus material, okay. and, um, and it makes a quite a bit of difference in the, in the feel properties and mm -hmm. the performance. So I think you know, adding that was... Um, was beneficial. And where did you put the Trax in the shaft? The Trax is going to be in the in the core, and it's going to be full length. Full length Trax. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so I would expect to see fairly low torque in the shaft. You 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 will see some low torque. It's not going to be extremely low because again, we don't want to make it to the point where it's uh, the feel is feels like a board. Yeah. 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 Correct. Okay, so this is the next step in, in evolution of the speeder. That's right. It's offer it. We, we just launched it. And, uh, you know, the response has been really good. On the demo day, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people who have been hitting this, and um, they really like that feel and performance out of it. Isn't this the shaft that's in one of the OEM products? Is, we, isn't this in TaylorMade? We offer uh, in, their t in their Tour Preferred line. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I believe it's Tour Preferred line or, or their, the TP line. Yeah, we're offering right. the speeder there. Okay. So, so this shaft is, is out there. It is out there. It's accessible. It definitely. Yeah. What else have you done this year? We have actually two other new products that we're really proud to launch. Um, this one being the, the Speeder Pro. Mm -hmm. And the Speeder, Speeder Pro. Yeah, the Speeder Pro. And so last year there was Fuji Pro. Now we have a Speeder Pro. That's correct. Okay. So it's, a, it's, it's a kind of an extension to that where this one here uh, has some differences in that it's a, uh, this was built with today's club heads in mind where they're getting a little slightly heavier mm -hmm. and some people uh, or some people are trying to go with longer club head cl mm -hmm. longer clubs mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that there's a, a difficulty in getting the swing weight of the club mm -hmm. this shaft was designed in a way that where we wanted to really reduce um, the swing weight or mm -hmm. basically bring the balance point higher up mm -hmm. okay so we have a technology called HDCC which stands for high density composite core 
HDDC. HDCC. HDCC. Yeah, high density composite core. We, what okay. we did was we put this heavier composite material in the handle section. Okay. Okay. And that's yeah. going to help counterbalance. Mm -hmm. We also take weight out of the tip area, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we replace that with higher modulus materials to okay. to make sure we. So you hold on to tip stability with high modulus materials. Absolutely. You take a little extra you, you, heavier you pull materials. some weight in here with a material right. that isn't really going to add excessive stiffness. Absolutely. That's so correct. we're not going to see one of these EI curves no. that, that takes off towards rocket. the moon. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to get to see something a little more rational. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then for the club builder, it's you know the, the ability to hit club swing weight, mm -hmm. right, with a heavier head or um, a longer club. Okay. And uh, by doing this HTCC in the butt section, we also have a, a straight taper design. And it's something that's kind of important to me. When Speeder first launched, they had a very large butt OD. And um, I think there are some players, uh, especially on tour, that when they start using that and getting accustomed to it, mm -hmm. there's a certain feel attribute of having a larger handle. You know, mm -hmm. and um, and then we've got and, and, I, and I know one player that will tell me if I've got one too many pieces of tape. He he, he stopped. Yeah. He interrupted a trial we were doing the other day and said, "You've got a .58 grip on a .60 shaft. I'm going to leave these all to the right." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oops. There's a there is. A, some attributes to the handle. I think what you're bringing up is some performance differences on closure, maybe, as the size of the handle changes, right? Yeah. That's interesting you bring yeah. that up because we did some Enzo evaluation on that. Did you? Yes, yeah, because yeah. we okay. were really interested in knowing whether we were, because we want to really make this a straight taper product with a larger mm -hmm. handle mm -hmm. and, uh, and maintain a feel attribute for people who might prefer the larger handle size. And of course, some comp the first thing's concerns are whether that handle affects the, uh, your closure, right? Right. So we ran these tests on Enzo, and we could not find you couldn't. any kind of trend that would say it was, you know. I'm going to send you somebody that will sh that will show it to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't tell him what you put in his hand; he'll tell you. Okay. And he's a former tour player. Sure. Right. So. Sure. And um, I think you might say for some people they would they might have that effect. Every time you find a rule, you find that twenty percent. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, but to me, the feel attribute is actually important. Yeah. Uh, when you when you're used to something with a larger diameter and you touch something that's honestly different than what you're accustomed to, mm -hmm. before you even swing it, you might have some perceived um, you know negative yeah. effects of something that you're not yeah. accustomed to. Yeah. So we don't know whether we've got a psychosomatic effect there, and he feels the bigger grip and leaves them all to the right. Yeah, I personally think that uh, the larger grip uh, allows you to grip it with less pressure. Right, yes. because you have yep. more yep. surface area to hold on to, and you don't mm -hmm. have to really clamp down yeah. on it with your hands. And when you yeah. can, and if you have the ability to do that, there's nothing like trying to fit a guy with Paul Bunyan style hands yeah. in a standard grip. Yes, right. Which is why in all of my fittings, I recommend to all other fitters that they get an air compressor and have it out there with them, <laughs> and blow those grips off and change and put the grip in the guy's hands. It fits. I don't know how you can fit without doing it. Sure, I uh, just can't figure it out. You know, and, and you bring up a good point. For larger hands, they probably would need a larger grip. Um, my point is that even if you have a small, even at, at any hand size, just sometimes gripping something that's a larger diameter will mm -hmm. just have a more comfortable feel. Yes. And I think that... Uh, Putter grips. Look where that went. That's a great example. Yeah. You know, but when you grip something that's a larger diameter, the idea of not having to use so much pressure, it's a yeah. looser wrist. We yeah. expect you to have a, a looser, you know, release. Right, and, and someone and, who has and you're to seeing it. it. We are seeing it. Okay, I would say it. So it's not just another idea that's floating out there. You see it, and that's 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 where it's different for what you're doing now. Is that is that the application of science is taking these theories and saying uh, that one works, yeah, but that one didn't, and that one didn't, and that one didn't. Right. We, could, we couldn't validate that. But here's an idea. And, and I heard this in a presentation the other day. Here's an idea that's 20 years old. We validated it. Mm -hmm. It's not like they discovered something new, but now they can say, yes, that one was a good one. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got this, and what we have here is amplification of the tip with higher modulus materials and a okay. shift in balance with materials that aren't going to put this grip that's right. 
off the off to the moon. That's right. And the difference between you know the speeder uh, evolution line with the speeder pro would be that uh, the, the evolution will tend to have a lower launch characteristics, and um, you know based on its tour heritage, you're going to see that this one here is for that kind of player who wants that kind of low launch, low spin. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Speeder Pro is kind of meant to take care of the other line that we're leaving out, mm -hmm. which is more of a forgiving tip side to give a little bit more launch and a little more spin. Mm -hmm. right? So there's some people who just have to have that. that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people actually that can use I, that. Yeah, yeah, many, many, many. many. And so what we hope it, that... It, it came to me one day when I wasn't quite doing it with my driver and just said, you're spending the rest of the day in the bag, pulled out my three wood and, and whacked the ball much, much further yeah. than I had been hitting my driver that month. Yeah. And my friends all looked at it and said, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shortened it up a little bit and put some more loft on it. There you go. And so here we've got a little extra loft That's right. for those days when you're just not delivering a positive angle of attack. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we have here? This, let me tell you this though. This is uh, offered in a 66 gram and a 76 gram. Yeah. Um, within only about, I think we have nine SKUs on this, and it's a really a complete fitting system. Uh, and we have a tour spec line of this as well. Okay. Okay. So the tour spec line is something that I think Fujikura we're going to promote uh, more prevalently because the tour spec is that stiffer. Um, st low launch, low spin kind of profile. Mm -hmm. I think in the past you've seen us uh, have products that I think we've been known for, sometimes people say we're a very stiff product and it's mm -hmm. hard to fit the masses. You know, they, a mm -hmm. lot of our customers would say that, you know, I've got a lot of customers that don't fit this category. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I think a solution to that was have a tour spec line and that tour spec line satisfies the tour and these people who are bombers and really yeah. need that kind of rigidity. Yeah. Right. And uh, the non tour spec lines, um, are and just and a step down. You do that in, in most of your products. We're right? doing that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah more so and more. So we've got these, and then we've got the tour spec line. Correct. To kind of segregate that out, yeah, so that we yeah. could serve um, a, a larger audience. Right. right. And so you, so you have the the point zero and the point one, the That's point right. two, and then the tour spec. That's right. Sometimes a point two and point three Correct. in the tour spec. Yeah. So uh, this guy here with nine SKUs, I think we have a really good fitting solution. We call it like a, you know, it's the way we're going to fit with this is a. There's like four S flexes in this line, four mm -hmm. X flexes in this line, and and those are kind of like the people I think we're going to be navigating, uh, are going to be going toward this. And if one doesn't work, there's three others right. that that could that you could dial in flight. Right. Same weight, same, same. Well, stiffness it, it, in a sense. The weight will will gradually change. Yeah. Uh, the weight as the weight gets heavier. Yeah. The stiffness slightly gets heavier, yeah. right? And so your launch can come down, right. and the torque will change as well mm -hmm. to get stiffer. So it's, you get this ability to lower the flight mm -hmm. as you get higher in weight, or as you choose torque spec. Right. So you can go in the torque spec if you want that, or go higher in weight. Yep. Okay, got it. The SIX. Okay. The SIX is also an iconic brand for us. It was a lightweight structure. I believe it's over 10 years old really? when the first yeah, SIX was yeah. launched. And you know, when we discontinued it, there were a lot of people who wanted us to bring it back, and they were kind of upset that we discontinued it. And it had a lot of success on tour. Yeah, oh, and really? that was yeah. kind of a unique thing because at the time, uh, tour especially was in the 70 to 80 gram range of mm -hmm. weight. You know, today I think you'll see a lot of popularity in the 70 and 60 gram range. Right. So it's already yeah. kind of it's reducing. It's coming down. It's yeah. coming down. This guy was and, ahead of its time. And some of that has to do with high modulus material. Materials are changing. That's true, but this one w had high modulus materials at its inception. Okay. And it was a lightweight product, and it did well on tour. Mm -hmm. I think just with progression of our model line, you know, we had to get rid of it. And uh, there was a clamoring for it to come back. And mm -hmm. this year, we brought it back, and it's really in the same profile mm -hmm. of the existing. So the people who liked the SX before, mm -hmm. you're getting it here. Mm -hmm. in the same type of profile. We did bring up a tour spec as well, mm -hmm. and then a non-tour spec side, so that, again, fit a, a larger audience. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't profiled this shaft yet. What's, it, what's the EI curve look like? It's gonna be very smooth EI. You're gonna see that uh, it's gonna be stiffer in the tip, stiff in the handle, right, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. And so that gives it that kind of stability at mm -hmm. this lightweight. Mm -hmm. That's why I think why the tour preferred it. That's mm -hmm. why the TS, you're going to see that to tour spec versions. Again, we're going to soften that up. You say stiffer up. here, stiffer there, that means softer here. Well, not necessarily. It just means... It, and, and softer here is not a bad no, thing. No, it's I, not. You know, I, I, but you're going to probably see a progression thing. where it's 
a, the, the stiffness will will probably lower a bit slightly right here, correct? Okay, yeah. 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 It's like 80% of the people on the planet fit into that yeah. design. And you know, it's a low swing weight design as well. Yeah. And again, back in the day, low swing weight designs weren't even required or even um, something people were looking for. Mm -hmm. But it was already built into the product. Mm -hmm. And so bringing it out again today, again with heads that are heavier or people want to go over length, Mm -hmm. They get this kind of attribute of building a club to the proper swing weight. Yeah, you know, I had a discussion two days ago on Demo Day about being able to change weights and get those head weights down to a range where I think many, many more golfers other than the bombers are comfortable. Yeah. You know, I mean, my, I would say 80% of the people I fit fit around 202 grams. Yeah, so you're seeing heads 205, 206, you know? Ouch. And so um, I think sometimes when people are fitting, they're, they're taking head weights out and, and substituting them to yeah. try to get swing yeah. weight. That's yeah. one solution, yeah. right? Yeah, and but I've been told that I can, I can get the weight, so I'm not going to have to grind them. So, so I'm looking forward to yeah. getting people back into that 200, 2 gram range. And you're saying this is the shaft I should be looking at? Yeah, I think, oh, well, if you're, if you're dealing with heads that are heavier or any shaft head weight, I think you're a better opportunity to build a club to the proper swing weight using shafts like the SIX, uh, even the Speeder Pro, and, mm -hmm. and to some extent the Evolution. The Evolution, of course, has he some heavier swing weights on the shaft. So that, um, yeah. again, for that certain player who wants it. Or needs it. Or needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so you've done some of the same kind of swing weighting in this. This is not a new product. This is been around for how long now? This was launched last year. This is actually something we're very proud of, the, 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 the Pro Iron, the Fujikura Pro Iron series. And this is the 70, this is the 95i. We mm -hmm. actually also have this in 75 grams. And talking about swing weight, you know, and, and the drivers were so concerned about having it being too heavy on one side, the balance point too low, mm -hmm. or, or uh, yeah, so we're trying to push that weight up. And in the mm -hmm. irons, it's complete opposite, mm -hmm. where we want to push the weight toward the tip end or the midsection, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we get more swing weight. The problem mm -hmm. with, um, with graphite, because it's lighter, mm -hmm. um, to try to match the steel swing weight, it's a challenge because mm -hmm. uh, the product's just lighter. The materials aren't, aren't, aren't like right. steel. And so the typical solution has been to build clubs over length, which isn't good for the typical golfer. It's, it's very common, right? You go mm -hmm. over length, then, it, and I think if you're, a, if you're a golfer that needs graphite in the first place, maybe because it's feel or maybe because you want to accelerate the club more or mm -hmm. for accuracy purposes, going half inch over length isn't necessarily going to help your accuracy. Yeah. I always believe it's, that. It's not going to help your dispersion pattern. Correct. Out so, yeah. I, yeah. you know, and the other solution to that is people are putting a lot of lead tape on the head. And I think they're affecting mass properties of the head and, yeah. and CG locations. And that's a little risky proposition, right? Mm -hmm. So a product like this where we have something we call HDCC and we've actually located it in this midsection. It's a large uh, high density composite mass mm -hmm. here that does not affect stiffness, but it, it adds so it's a lot of change weight. The, this. The stiffness progression down the Correct. shaft. We're not going to see a big bump. You're not going to see a big bump. So yeah. it's the, it's a great profile of stiffness mm -hmm. without a huge mass of carbon fiber here, which is mm -hmm. I think a, a, one of the easier solutions for this product would be, you know, put a lot of carbon fiber here. And so when you look at the tip end of the shaft, you see this pinhole because mm -hmm. there's so much material there. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's been a, in, a, in the past a historical solution for mm -hmm. graphite irons. Mm -hmm. You need more weight here, so put more material here. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's graphite. And what happens is you get a very stiff, stiff structure, mm -hmm. and it's maybe not going to have the feel attributes that are going to be successful. And mm -hmm. I think graphite irons have suffered because of some of that, right? Especially for better players. Mm -hmm. a, a solution like this here, you know, we got a. It's basically almost like a lightweight shaft with a heavy weight in here hmm. and then so you get the mass properties and you're getting the without, without having to go and throw a yes. tip weight in it that's right or put tape i mean so I, yes. I don't mind putting tape on heads i'd rather put in tape than tip weights but not very many players like to that's walk right. out of a fitting with a brand mm -hmm. new set of cuffs with um, light tape no it doesn't look nice right yeah it's a beautiful head and yeah. then you're slapping the stuff on yeah it's the message we want to tell our you I, know, I did our have one player that let me do it he happened to be a plus two handy oh yeah okay yeah, he yeah. said yeah apply the lead tape do as it needed. yeah do it yeah. yeah well again this is a solution for that right to be able to uh, substitute a steel shaft with graphite at the same steel lengths mm -hmm. and still achieve the swing weights that you want 
the swing weight that the customer has grown up with and been right. comfortable with and is accustomed to. That's right. And you could drop the weight, you know, so that yeah. you don't have the, you know, you're not hitting 125 gram yeah. grams. You need, you could, he, can, he can actually lift it now that he's a little older. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not going to feel significantly different. That's right. And we've great. got we've got a lot of uh, talented players that that are, I hate to say it, they they love steel and, and their irons, you know, because that's something that they've been accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And when we've sampled this to them, they've they've taken the steel out of their bag. And we hear that story more and more these days. We hear this more and more, and I we see the segment of uh, irons growing in graphite. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, it's it's definitely somewhere that I think we have a product here that uh, will help that growth. Mm -hmm. Well, what I say to people is, you're going to pay a little more for these, but really, if you amortize this over three or four years that it's going to take you to wear out your iron hats, why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's absolutely true. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, Alex, it's always a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Russ, appreciate it. It's okay. always good. And maybe we'll actually get out to Carlsbad this year. I hope so. You're welcome. Out there. Welcome. We'd love to give you a little tour of our facility and show you Enzo firsthand. And that'd be great. Okay. Well, we're going to we're gonna put it on, try to get it on the calendar and see if we can squeeze it in. So, Russ from DevotedGolfer.tv with Alex D. Fujikura, thanks for spending your time with us. Thank you.